So this is Heron's Fountain. And if you look there, you can see that the water is flowing nicely through it. Now, Heron's Fountain was developed by a guy called Heron of Alexandria in, I think, the first century BC. He was also known as Hero of Alexandria, and he's the guy that's responsible for the first steam engine. So, clearly, smart guy. Now, what's happening as it's doing this is that this water here is being forced down into this container, which is increasing the air pressure here. That increase of air pressure is being transferred into this container by the pipe, which is pushing down on that water there, forcing it up through here, which is then going into there and cycling back in there to increase the air pressure. So it actually works by the head of the water exerting pressure on the air in the space there. Now you see lots and lots of designs for this, but the basic thing looks like this. And you can see pretty much all I've done is taken those containers and made one long container out of them. Because this is made from three food containers that I've stacked on top of each other, drilled through in the holes as per the diagram, and stuck some aluminium pipe in there. It's so easy to make, it's hardly even worth the trouble of showing you. Just drill some holes and glue the pipe in, sellotape them together. I've put electrician's tape around this, and hey presto, you're going to have yourself a heron's fountain. Now, it is an absolutely fascinating device, and it has got people's imagination because of the potential of this device. I see it more as a mechanical battery. Now, in this condition, I would say this mechanical battery is discharged. We want to charge it. All we do is transfer the water from that container to the central container, and it is charged. Now, normally when you see the Heron's Fountain designs, this top container is open. Now it works if it's open, it works if it's sealed. I've sealed it so that we can have this turn and charge facility, which I think is actually rather awesome. And there we go again. You can design these to be four containers in a row, in which case you just keep turning it and turning it, and you'll get the Heron's Fountain effect working just for turning it. Now I mentioned earlier it was a pressure device. When your water is delivered at the tap, it's normally backed up by a water tank which creates a head of pressure so you get a reasonable pressure at your faucet. Here, what we've got is a device where the pressure is always going to be the same because these two are near to each other. But there's no reason those two need to be near to each other. It works best if these two are near to each other, but these two can be put at a distance apart. So we can have that upstairs and that downstairs and we will have a head of pressure where we can actually get a much stronger flow at this point here. Now I'm really interested in that because I'm thinking about using this to actually generate electricity. Now the main person who put me onto this and the person you want to blame for this is proper technician EE. E. He designed a water battery which I really quite liked where he had one large container and then put a smaller container inside that large container, obviously creating a space with air. And then you turn a tap, the water can go into that space, and you get the air driven out to give you some pressure to do some work. The problem with that, I thought, was that you would only get a fixed head of water. Now, he was thinking about putting it in a lake, in which case you would have more pressure, obviously, for depth of lake. But you don't have a lot of lakes at your your house, or not a lot of people do, so in order to make a water battery that had sufficient pressure, it occurred to me that it was uh, in fact very similar to Hero's Fountain, and we could separate those two so that we could actually create a much greater pressure difference. Now the reason I want to create a pressure difference is I've got this thing. This is a little impeller with a generator attached that I bought off eBay, uh, and it's at Amazon actually. And it's made to go in line with your house supply. So you put that in line with your house supply and you turn on your tap, it will spin the impeller and it's supposed to generate between 5 and 12 volts. So I want to put that in line here on a bigger version with more pressure. So I've also got these things. 
These are 20 litre sealable containers. So I plan on putting those 20 litre containers in the position that I was talking about, connected with pipes and that connected up to it. So we can, if we can see that that can generate, or we can see if it can generate, in which case we have ourselves a mechanical water battery. Now in order to recharge that battery, obviously we have to transfer the water from here to here. Now, we don't necessarily need to pump that. We could carry it uh, as a distinct possibility. If you're feeling strong and you don't put too much water in, you can actually carry those upstairs. That's a little inconvenient. We might want to pump it, in which case we've got a kind of a pumped hydro system able to put into your house. So that's what I'm thinking of. Now, as I say, I created this as a sealed unit so that we could just turn it over and over and over. So clearly it works as a sealed unit, so this will go nowhere. Anything that transfers the water from here to here is going to be a viable option. So, of course, we could use heat. We could uh, heat the water and condense it, and that would transfer one to the other. We could use a pump. We could use it disconnecting and simply carrying it. There's a whole host of ways that that can actually be done. Now, this three container design is the standard design, if you like, but it doesn't have to be three containers. I have seen uh, Bruce Yearney do a two container version, which I thought was really quite awesome, actually. And as I say, you can design a four container system. So there's lots of ways of doing this. We're going to use a three container system because it's your standard Heron's fountain and actually get something out of this. Now, I have seen these purportedly run perpetually on uh, various YouTube videos. But to be honest, they are actually just scams. So this thing is not a perpetual motion machine. But it certainly is a very interesting mechanical store of energy that's quite approachable, I think. But worth exploring, and that's what we're going to do, a little bit of exploration on that, courtesy of Prepper Technician EE. So thank you very much, mate. You're the eye to blame. <laughs> and see what we can actually do with it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you feel like making one, like I say, follow the drawing. It's really simple. Just drill a few holes and stick your pipes in there. Your containers, whatever you want. And thank you very much for watching. If you feel like subscribing, please do. And see you again.